Hey everyone, it's Thomas. Welcome if you're new to the channel. I love running back-to-back -back marathons. Not only do I find them to be a fun personal challenge, back-to-back -back long runs are a tried and true training technique used by many ultra runners. It basically involves running long distances on two consecutive days, usually on a Saturday and Sunday, so that you train your body and your mind to move on tired and sore legs. And if you plan it right, it is an efficient way to tackle two marathons in two nearby states on a weekend. This was actually one of my strategies for completing my goal of running a marathon or longer distance in all 50 states in the United States. I also enjoyed a road trip experience of visiting different states on a weekend. In this video, I thought it might be helpful to share some do's and don'ts for running marathons on consecutive days based on my own experience. Please do share your experience and ask any questions in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching and stay safe everyone. While this one is obvious, it is the most important thing to consider. Finding two marathons that are within driving distance from each other will reduce your commute time and help simplify the logistics. So that you will have plenty of time after your first marathon to drive to the next town or city for your second marathon. Especially if you plan to go to the Marathon Expo before it closes. If the marathon offers race day package pickup, I usually will skip the Expo so I could swing by a grocery store to buy water and food check into my hotel and have an early dinner, which will maximize the amount of rest I could get after the first marathon. Finally, you can pick races that start and finish at the same spot. Also, book hotels located midway between the start slash finish area of the two marathons. These two strategies will help further reduce your commute time. Assuming you are not running the first of the two marathons for a personal record or PR, slowing down your pace will help reduce tissue and muscle damage and minimize the risk for injury. If you are going for a PR for the first marathon, you should definitely take it easy on the second marathon. Since I use back-to-back -back marathons mostly as training runs to prepare for ultras, I often run a 5-hour marathon pace, which is a comfortable effort for me. I also take walking breaks as I film a lot during my run. Even if you run a suboptimal effort in the first marathon, it will still take a toll on your body. There are a few things you could do to help your body recover after the first marathon as well as after the second marathon. First, you will want to spend the least amount of time possible at the post-race party so that you have plenty of time to get to your next race. Check into your hotel, shower, and most importantly, keep your feet off the ground as soon as possible. I put my feet on the wall for 15 to 20 minutes. If you have the time and money, you can get a massage nearby if you didn't already have one at the post-race party. For me, I will usually get an early dinner and then perform stretches and foam roller massages in the hotel gym. Most hotel gyms have foam rollers, but you can also bring your own foam roller or a massage stick. Speaking of dinner, eating a healthy and well-balanced meal consisting of proteins, carbs, and good fats will also help reduce muscle damage and expedite recovery. Truth be told, I suck at this, but I do try my best to avoid eating junk or processed food as they cause inflammation and interfere with recovery. And of course, stay hydrated all days and replenish your electrolytes with either sports drinks or electrolytes infused water. Another thing that I do is to take multivitamins and anti-inflammatory supplements, including fish oil and turmeric pills, to further help keep the inflammation at bay. Finally, get as much sleep as possible. After completing over 230 marathons and ultras, I don't get pre-race jitters the night before anymore, so I sleep like a baby. If you have trouble sleeping, you might want to take melatonin or an Epsom salt bath before bedtime, if they work for you. There are practical reasons why you would want to have more than one pair of running shoes. 
For example, with an extra pair, you can run in the rain in your first marathon and still have dry running shoes the next day for your second race. The same goes for a hot and humid day, as your running shoes will likely need more than a day to completely dry and air out. And you would definitely want to bring two different pair of running shoes if one of your two races is a trail race. Some believe the foam, especially for running shoes that have accumulated a lot of mileage, may not regain its cushioning fast enough if you use them every day, which leads to less support. Another reason for bringing an additional pair of running shoes, either the same model or a different one, is that you could reduce injury risk because you avoid putting this exact same stress on your leg muscles all the time. In fact, because of this reasoning, many 100 mile ultra runners will rotate their running shoes throughout the race. Lastly, it goes without saying that running marathons on consecutive days will create stress and anxiety. Approaching the challenge of running back-to-back -back marathons with a positive and relaxed attitude will go a long way. Since you're likely not going for a PR, at least not for your second marathon, take in the full experience and experiment. Learn what does and does not work for your body in terms of tolerance and recovery. And most importantly, have fun. As you can see in my videos, I always make sure to allocate some spare time either before or after each race to check out local sites and attractions. It is truly a great way to experience the beauty and diversity that America has to offer. Good job, nice work, nice work. Water. Uh, thanks, man. Thank you. Enjoy.